there are many properties of Z transform, but we will here discuss some of these properties. The first property is the linearity property. And uh, you, you should know that whenever we uh, talk about the linearity property, so it uh, will always contain two uh, further sub properties. They include uh, superposition and scaling. So if these two properties, which means scaling and superposition are uh, satisfied, it means the linearity property is satisfied. And what does it mean in this, in this case of Z transform? Then this property says that the Z transform of x1 of n, which was x1 of z, it will also be multiplied with the same constant. So what does it mean by superposition? It means that if we add these two sequences x1 of n plus x2 of n, then according to superposition, their corresponding z transforms will also be added up. The second property that we will discuss is time shifting. time shifting. What does time shifting means? Time shifting means that whenever we delay a sequence by let's say n naught, what will happen in Z transform? In Z domain, there will be multiplication with a factor Z raised to the power minus n naught multiplied by X of Z, which was the actual Z transform. So it means when we multiply, uh, when we delay the time domain sequence, the corresponding frequency domain sequence will be multiplied by this particular term, which means there will be poles and zeros at z is equal to zero. So, what does it mean? You take z raised to the power minus one to the denominator. It is z one over z into z minus one. So, originally, it the z transform got only one pole, this one, but in this particular case we have got two poles, one at z is equal to zero and the other one at z equal to one. It is basically multiplication by exponential sequence here, that if we have a sequence x of n like this, and if we multiply it with z naught raised to power n, where z naught is any constant, it can be real, it can be imaginary, We will. it can be complex, we will see the effects of both when z naught is equal to a real number and when z naught is a complex number, what will happen? But the common perspective is that if you multiply x of n with z naught raised to power n means any exponential sequence, then the z transform will be scaled by z naught, which can be written as the ROC, the previous, previous ROC was z magnitude greater than 1 by 2. So basically we have multiplied it with that number 2 magnitude to result in the changed ROC which is given. The next property is differentiation. So if you multiply uh, the time domain sequence x of n with simply n, the time index, then the consequence in the Z transform domain will be what? You have to take the def derivative of Z transform and multiply it with minus Z. ROC will not be changed. ROC is unchanged so that is a very simple thing. So overall this will be the uh, formulation of the uh, inverse Z transform. Next we have time reversal. Time reversal means that if you uh, take in, uh, the, um, if you apply the time reversal property in time domain, what will happen in frequency domain? In frequency domain all the poles and zeros are inverted. Means it will simply mean that if a pole is located at 2, it will go to 1 by 2. Right? So simply inversion. And definitely, when you reverse a time domain sequence, so originally, if it is if it was a right-sided sequence, then after reversal, it will become a left-sided sequence. The next one is convolution of sequences. This is very, very important property. Convolution of sequences means that if you have two time domain sequences and you convolve x1 and x2 in time domain, it is similar to performing multiplication in frequency domain. And what is the ROC? ROC will contain the intersection of both the original ROCs of X1 and X2, which says that if X of N is zero for N less than zero, that is if X of N is causal, then you have X of zero is equal to limit Z approaches to infinity X of Z. So you, if you put Z approaches to infinity in X of Z, you will end up obtaining X of zero. This is the initial value theorem. 